All right, welcome everybody to a special midnight edition of CSI 26. I had to miss the last two lectures because I was at a workshop. I didn't schedule it on the last week of school. I'm sorry for that. So I'm going to give you guys a little bonus lecture right now at 1132 at night. So, so late. We're computer science majors, man. Come on, this is when we get going. Let's do this. I got four hours of sleep. I got four hours of coffee in me. So let's go. Let's go. All right. So let's talk about dynamic programming. Now, I gave all of you guys a quiz that asked this question. It says, you've got Bob. Bob starts here at the beginning of a vector. This is size 10, maybe 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Sure. Bob can either step forward 2 at a time, or Bob could step forward 3 at a time. Bob has to land on the final square. He has to start on the starting square, too. What route can Bob take through this vector that will result in the highest score? Every time he lands on a number, he gets that score. So... Um, a lot of students who answered this question said, well, just try every route and pick the one that is highest. And that is known as a order no algorithm. <laughs> Not order n, order no, you don't do that. That's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's exponential, right? Exponential complexity is no. In other words, it will result in such a long running time, you will hit the heat death of the universe before you solve it for even like a vector of size 200 or something like that, okay? Yeah, order O oh no is exactly right. So we can actually solve this problem in order n time, okay, which is much, much faster than no. <laughs> All right. And so the way we do this with dynamic programming is we create what's called a memo table, which is a fancy way of saying a vector. And uh, let's get my order n out of the way here. And so what we do is we... Uh, I should probably just insert another table here. Uh, can I move it? No, I need the mouse for this. Okay. So what we can do is uh, with this memo table, we can record the most number of points that we could get up to this point. Okay. So like, for example, here at this point, I don't need my marker, I guess. Uh, at this point, zero. Uh, this one's not reachable. You can't even get to that spot, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but for this one, the most points we can acquire is 10, right? Because we've got the starting square, which has zero points on it. And we move here and we acquire 10 more points. So the maximum number of points, the optimal number of points we could get uh, at this square is 10. And then for this one, the optimal number of points is uh, 40. Because we can't move backwards too. Okay. But now when we are looking at the 10 here, we've actually got two options for the maximum number of points, and we need to pick the bigger one, okay? So rather than thinking about moving forward, let's think about moving backwards, okay? So rather than, uh, you know, we know the rules, you have to move forward two, you have to move forward three, those are your only options. If we're, if we're gonna try and figure out what is the maximum number of points we could reach here, uh, obviously it's gonna be 10 plus something, okay? And we've got two options. We've got uh, coming from here, and we've got coming from here. Okay. And uh, we might want to discard this one or something because you can't actually get to this point. But uh, either way, the, the numbers will work out. We can actually just bias this by putting in like a negative 999, you know, something like that. Um, uh, just to pick, like, because you can't, you can't move one. So it's actually impossible to do here. So our two options are either. 10 plus 0 or 10 plus 10. Which one is higher? Which one is higher? 10 plus 10 or 10 plus 0? 10 plus 10. So the maximum number of points we can get at this square is 20. Okay. Now if it matters which route we take, we're actually going to use a third uh, vector here that records which square we came from. And so this guy came from index zero. This guy is not reachable. This guy came from index zero. This guy came from index zero. This is, I don't know, the start or something. And then this guy came from index two. Okay. You guys see that? So what happened to my values? Weird. Okay, let's try that again. Copy, paste. There we go. No, weird. It is not duplicating. Copy. 
paste. So strange. Okay. Let's get this guy back up here. Let's do that again. So the starting point, we can say it came from negative one. Uh, okay. This guy came from index zero. This guy came from index zero. This guy came from index two. Okay. And so if you, if you ever need to know what your exact route would be and not just the maximum number, you would need to kind of record where you came from as well. Okay. So now let's look at the next one. And you can see we can actually just do this going down the line. And so uh, this, this problem, by the way, is very similar to a job interview question asked at Google by a friend of mine. Uh, he gave a two-dimensional version of this, and I might very well give the two-dimensional version to you on your final. So pay attention. It'll be very similar to this. Okay, so. <laughs> Once you understand it, though, you'll understand. It'll make sense. Okay. So now, when we're we're now here, right? We're looking at we're looking at fifty now, right? We're looking at fifty. So there's two options for getting to fifty. There's moving from the forty square, and there's moving from the ten square. So which one of those is going to yield more points? Fifty plus forty, or fifty plus ten? What do you guys think? It, the two D version is actually. Almost identical to this. So, if you understand this, forty plus fifty, right? So, what it, our, what is our optimal number of points? What is the maximum number of points we could get up to this point? Ninety is correct. Good. And then we chose to come from index three, which is that guy, rather than from index two. So you see how we're making choices along the way. This guy's index three, right? Zero, one, two, three. Okay. And so we just write down, yeah, we came from index three, if we care. If all we care about is the optimal number of points, the max number of points, then we don't even need to write down where we came from. All right, now we do the next one. Okay, now this one's a zero. So it's just going to be zero plus 20 or zero plus 40. Which one's bigger? What do you mean 20? That's the number I'm looking at there. Okay, this is what eliminates the explosion, the exponential explosion. I'm not looking at just the 10. I'm saying, what is the maximum number of points that I could get up to this point? And the maximum number of points up to this index right here is actually 20. Okay. I don't have to look at every possible route going back because I know from there, the most number of points I could acquire possible is 20. And so I've only got two options. Instead of an exponential number of options, I only have to say, what's bigger, 40 or 20? That's it. So the answer is, of course, 40 is bigger. So the biggest uh, amount we could have here is 40. And that would be coming from index 3. Okay. And then here, we've got two options again. We can either come from here or we can come from here. And so here, we've got, an, we've got 90, right? Not 50. 90 is the highest possible score we could we could arrange that way uh, or 20 which one's bigger 90 or 20 Bruce take it away 90 it is good okay so we've got uh, 90 as our maximum value here and that would be coming from index 0 1 2 3 4 5 now at this square we're almost done we've got two options we can come from here we're going to come from here. So uh, either 40 or 90. Which one's bigger? I got my Panda Express ready. 90 it is. And so 90 plus 60, everybody, is what number? As wake. There we go. 150 it is. Good job, Bruce. And that would be coming from index... Uh, Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And then finally, we've got our end goal. Okay. And this is going to give us our final answer. So we've got two options to come from. We can come from one that has a optimal value of 40 or an optimal value of 90. Obviously, 90 is bigger. 90 plus zero is 90. And that would be coming from index seven. Okay. And that is our answer, my friends. So the most number of points that we could acquire by marching through the vector this way, either two steps at a time or three steps at a time is 90. Not 150, 
while it would be really neat to get 150, if we're here, we would step off the edge of the vector, right? Because you have to move forward two steps or three steps. Either way, you're out of bounds. So, you guys understand? It'd be cool if we could get that 150, but we can't. We can't catch it. Uh, there is just no no route from from there to there. Okay. So that is uh, that is the uh, the idea, and the idea is you write down the optimal amount up to your current point, and you just iterate across the whole thing. And if you have a limited number of choices like that, like for the two D version, you could either come from the north, or you can come from the west. Then, um, which you might have seen this in in one of my videos already. Uh, would it work if you go forwards instead of backwards? Um, maybe. I mean, you know, it, you could probably do some sort of inverse thing on it, but this is the way that this is the way that I would do it. In fact, it's the way that I'm going to code it for you guys right now. Okay. Unless you need to see another uh, another example on here, I'm just going to code up a solution for you. Okay. So. Start from scratch. Uh, we don't need anything. Just vector, I guess. Okay, so we'll have a vector of integers named Beck. And we can just load this up with our numbers. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have closed one note so soon. Uh, I'm just going to use the numbers from that just so we can double check ourselves. Zero, zero, 10, 40, 10, 50, 60, 0. Zero, and then we will make a uh, memo that is of size ten, and those are all going to be zeros by default. And then, if we wanted, we could record our route, but eh. uh, we'll just maybe do that later. Let's let's just do this two vectors instead of three. It'll maybe make it a little bit more um, easy for you. Maybe I'll be a little bit more cool here. I'll, I'll just have the memo be the size of the vector. Now, actually, if I wanted, I could actually just um, overwrite these values as I went, right? Like I could actually just uh, put into here, you know, 90, right? Like I could actually just overwrite the values as I go if I don't need those original values anymore. But, you know, if I was going to be backtracking, I'd be like, walk forward two, pick up to the 10, walk forward three, pick up the 50. So. Uh, if I wanted to, I think I can actually do this entire thing just with the one, the one vector. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna preserve this. I will keep vec constant so that it cannot change. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, you think the code will make it make more sense? Cool. All right. So let's get going. Um, boom. For int i equals two. <clears throat> i is less than vector dot size i plus plus y2 uh, <laughs> we can walk forward two steps or three steps and pick up the points there so uh, there's no point starting at zero one um, if you want sure we can start there and then just do bounds checking extra if you want it's, it's all okay starting at the beginning going to the end all right so, uh, int, uh, let's make this, let's just make this unsigned integers, let's make this unsigned integers, um, because I don't want to worry about negatives, you know, just keep, keep life simple, okay. Um, ba -ba 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 okay, so, if, so we've got two options, we've got two options, we've got unsigned, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Uh, using uh, u32 equals um, u int 32t, uh, u int, no? Uh, that's what happens when you're on four hours of sleep and four hours of caffeine. u int 32t. Caffeine is your blood. It's so bright. Uh, you went 32 to do I mistype it? All right. Well, maybe I'll just have to include student. I'm 
Ja, ist leider nichts. Okay. Alright, so uh, we got ourselves some 32-bit integers with less typing. How about that? There we go. U32s all around. Everybody loves U32s. Okay, so we've got U32 option one is going to be equal to now because uh, every time we take a, every time we're at a spot, we only have to look at two options. One option is the value two behind us. The other is the option of three behind us. And whichever one's bigger, that's the one we pick. Okay, so uh, we have to do a little bounds checking, right? Because uh, if we go two to the left and we're at the beginning, because I decided to start at zero, just so you guys don't get mad at me. For <laughs> okay, so we need to check to make sure we are within bounds. So if i is less than two question mark ternary operator time. Here we go. Uh, then we just return zero. Otherwise, we're going to return vector dot at i minus two. Uh, grab the value from two steps back. Okay. So we're going to get the value from two behind us. And I think you can guess where we're going with option two here. Maybe you should get option two and option three. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so. Option two is from two steps back. Option three is from three steps back. Where's option one? There isn't one. Okay. So uh, there we go. We got some ternaries up in here. We got some bounds checking going on here. So if we are less than three, we can't grab a value from three back. Okay. We're just going to use, we're just going to use zero. We're just going to, eh, see. Okay. And if we can grab the value from three back, we do it. And I'm throwing a dot add on there, even though I think it's not necessary because we are bounds checking, but uh, I'm just paranoid and I've, and the running time of this is going to be so fast, you won't notice the use of square brackets anyway. So why not be safe? Hmm? If uh, if we're doing this in real time in stock market trading, you guys have permission to remove the dot at and replace it with brackets after you've tested it thoroughly and notice that uh, you are not going out of bounds. I'll drink a rock star to that. <sighs> All right. But is it English? Yes or no? Okay. So here is the heart of the program. You guys ready for this? U32 max is equal to, hey, let's not do max. Best is equal to the max of option two and option three. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's the heart of the program. Which one of the two spots is it better to come from? Two back or three back? You guys understand? Standard library function, std max. I can I can do that with a ternary too, Voss, if you want. We can, we can ternary, turn or a lambda. We can do a lambda. <laughs> a lambda with a ternary and some alternative operators so that instead of less than we okay. Right. What is it? Ellie, does that work? Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, let's just do this. This is fun. Okay. So the, that's our best option. And so the value at our current spot, uh, not vec, not vec, not vec, memo. Memo, memo, memo. Because, right, we're trying to grab the complete, total, maximum, optimal value that you could acquire by two steps back, not just the value there. Okay. So then we are going to write into the memo at our current spot the best plus the value of the vector at our current spot. Okay. So if we're currently here, let's say here, and the maximal value that we could have is like 40, then this is going to write into the memo 90. This is the, the most points we could acquire by this point in time. That's it. We're done. That's that's the whole program. Let's see what the answer is. Ninety. Hmm, look at that.
You got here too late, Eric. We already coded up the entire solution. That's it. Like I said, I, I we don't even need memo if uh, we're gonna we're, if we're gonna be fine corrupting the vector. We could actually have done this with one less vector. You're here for the start of it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, yeah. So uh, basically, each step that we go along, we just look two back. The most value we can have from two back is twenty. Three back. The most value you can have from three back is forty. Okay. Well. Pick the 40 then, and that's it. And as you go along, you will just build this table up that always contains the maximal, the optimal value up to this point. And then the later values just refer to that optimal value and pick between two optimal values and continue increasing. So this converts a order two to the n algorithm to an order n, which is a massive, massive speed up in performance. And dynamic programming is just cool like that. Um, there are a lot of problems that can be solved much, much more cleanly and efficiently if you use DP. Okay, uh, there are, it's also very popular in programming competitions and things like that. Um, leak code, uh, code wars, things like that. They have a lot of like the higher tier stuff usually has a DP element to in a lot of a lot of places. But um, yeah, were you guys expecting a longer program than that? Hard to implement, what is it? I mean, which number is bigger? We probably could have done this all in one line, right? Like, made a ternary out of a ternary. <laughs> option two less than option three, question mark. <laughs> we probably, you know, we could, I, I, could, I could feasibly eliminate that line. That line's obviously not important. All three of these lines could be one line. In fact, all four of these lines could be made into a one-liner. You want to do it? Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let, all right. Let's minify the code. Let's minify it. Let's do this. Okay. Um, sure. No more memo. We're done. We're done with you. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Let's just comment this out. Comment this out. Comment this out. Uh, unsigned int best is equal to that. See, now people are going to hate dynamic programming laws. It's like, we had a nice clean solution here and now now people are going to be like look at how complicated it is but it's not complicated it's just the ternary uh, the beast within us beast within us all okay don't use memo anymore obviously 4s back right all right you know what they say inside of every person there is a wolf there are two wolves and you use the question mark operator to pick between them Okay, uh, all right, so let's see, we got, that is option two. And if it is bigger, this is so stupid, okay. If this is bigger than option three, I'm gonna just put these in parentheses just for my own sanity's sake. So if option two is bigger than option three, question mark, then return option two. Otherwise, return option three. And rather than saying best, we are just going to say vec dot at i is equal to that. And I uh, should probably start at 2, just for safety's sake. All right, uh, good chance I've broken all this. I haven't had enough sleep here to do this for sure, but unsign it. Uh, this, this is like, if you just get one symbol wrong, then you summon Cthulhu, right? And uh, 
Zero. Yeah, it's okay, great. All right, now debug it, boss. So you've done, I blame it all on you. Let's just print, let's just print the whole vector and just see it, see what we ended up with here. So for uh, int x and vec, see out x. Oh, am I drinking rocks during your midnight? What are you talking about? Drinking horchata, man. What are you talking about? The rock star is just your imagination. Remember, gaslighting is not real, people. All right, let's try this. All zeros. Cool. All right. Yeah, keep it at ten here. Why not teach us turning from the start? There's some secret. No, not at all. Okay. Um, okay. So it is. So for one, we are successfully getting zero. And for that one, it's grabbing that one. Then for this one, Oh, you know what? It's not. It's because it's not adding. Okay. Yeah. 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 Actually, that was it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, is equal to vec dot at i. All right. It's this. We figured out best. We didn't add. We didn't add uh, the current value to it. So plus that monstrosity. So actually, this could just be a plus equals there. Oh. Okay, all right, let's try this. Neat, all right. Yep, works, cool. Yep. Two, zero, 10, 40, 20, 90. Two, zero, 10, 20, 40, 90. That's it. Can we shrink it more? What have I ever done? What have I ever done to you? Uh, obviously, we can take. We can obviously take the comments out. That'll make it a little bit smaller. Mm. There is some repetition here, definitely. I mean, that's why we use variables there, right? Hmm. Oh, well. Get rid of the curly boys. That'll help, right? And that whole thing is just one line of code now, right? So. Get rid of the namespace standard. Everybody loves STDs, right? There we go. How about that? Right? Let's do it. Let's bring back STDs. There it is. Don't need student anymore. Why not? Hmm? Hmm? We don't need vector. We don't need vector. Why not? Let's get rid of vector. Let's get rid of vector. Yeah. Let's do it in an array. Let's do arrays. It's array time. Yeah. Can't get the size of the array, so we'll just be a C programmer and just hard code it. Why not? Okay. Um, no more, no more dot ats, right? There's no more dot ats. It's just square bracket time now. It's just square bracket time. Um, gotta move my face out of the way. All right.
you know, I was proud of this solution when I when I first wrote it, and now look at <laughs> look at what they've done to my boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is not dynamic programming anymore. I should have stopped the video after five minutes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see if this still works. I have low confidence. Uh, okay. No, it still works. Still got 90. Um, yeah, I mean, if we, if we don't want to hard code the 10, we could say size of vec divided by size of unsigned integer. That's how you can get the size of an array, by the way. If you guys are ever curious about that. It only works in the scope that uh, the array is declared in. If you ever pass it to a function, you lose the size. But uh, get rid of read library. Okay, all right. So we can't see out anything anymore, but you know what we can do? We can return it, all right? We can return it. Sure, not? And uh, do it. Uh, run it, and then the return value is ninety. Sure, why not? We're done, I think. Uh, the only thing I don't like is this hard coded nine here, right? So of course we need to uh, we need to uh, we need to just copy this thing here and then subtract one from it, right? That's how you that's how you get the array size from a C style array. That's how you do it. You get the size of the array. That's the total number of bytes in the array. You divide by the size of each individual element. That's how many elements are in the array. Again, only works in the scope in which the variable, uh, the array variable is actually created. You can't do that generally. That's why arrays suck. I think we can shrink it more. No? Oh my gosh, dude. Okay. Can't um, we do? Can't, Can't we, do we do a, a lambda, lambda in the return, return to, to do the, the, the for loop? loop? And, and just, just do, do like, like the whole thing, thing and then just return, return the lat? We could do a transform standard library without involve having to include something. Um, this is all just, this is all, there is not a single ounce of standard library left in this. Which right. is great. I yeah, feel yeah. Like awesome. this is uh, three lines of code. Uh, we we could probably merge the return statement into the for loop, right? Right. By using another lambda. Yes. Well, we, we haven't, haven't used, used any lambdas lambda yet. I mean, not a lambda. Sorry, a ternary. Uh, we could, we could, we could use a, we could use a lambda actually. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Wasn't this supposed to be a twenty-five minute lecture? It's thirty-three minutes in. We finished a long time ago, Bruce. I don't like we're like it's it's past midnight now, and. Uh, I don't even know what's happening anymore. <laughs> it was so nice a second ago. I hope somebody took a screenshot of that because it, that version's never coming back. At least it's probably oh, on the YouTube. You didn't save it? I didn't save it, no. <laughs> Did you save it? I didn't save it. It's on YouTube. I'm sure you can screenshot it. Yeah, we'll be fine. Fine. Mm. Uh, <laughs> macro. Yeah, we could probably macro this, make it. You know, that's going to add another line of code, but maybe it'll clean it up a little bit, right? Let's do a hashtag macro. Let's do this. Let's define size of R to be size of R divided by size of, uh, how do we deduce the type of it? Hmm. Size of R square bracket zero, maybe? Try that. Let's see if this still works. Size of vec. Sure, why not? Okay. There we go. Let's do this. It's cleaner now. It's much cleaner now. I, I love I love hashtag define macros. This is 
Uh, yeah, see how much cleaner the code is? It's so much more understandable. It's more beautiful. Is it correct still? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> oh, Hanson has a screenshot of it. Nice, nice, nice. Almost, almost. You don't have a see out uh, memo dot back uh, is what you're missing on the last line there. <laughs> so uh, this is a uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, you can actually not just hashtag define constants, right? Like usually people do something like this, like define Bob to be five, and then if you like see out Bob, it's yeah, it's fun, right? But you can also define a macro, which is like a function, but it's not really a function. It's uh, it runs in the preprocessor and it does textual manipulation. And so anytime it sees something where you say size and it takes a parameter, it replaces it with this. Okay, so it's actually going to replace it with uh, this code here with R substituted with vec and R square uh, square bracket zero becoming vec square bracket zero. So you can you can cut down on your code that way. Um, hmm. Yeah, we can we can probably let's you know let's let's do another macro. Why not? Why not? Got four hours of sleep. Let's do this. First time the turn area stuff. What's up? Yeah, we're gonna cut down on the turn areas. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna gain some more lines. We're gonna we're gonna shrink it. We're gonna shrink it a little. We got a lot of redundant code there. So I'm gonna call. I need a name. I need a name. Bedencourt. Give me a name. I need a macro name. Dumber is better. I'm almost out of work. Too long. Unbearable. Too long. Too many characters. Naked mole rat. Nan, I love it. Nan, um, uh, uh, X. It's like R and X. And then it's going to say if. I don't know if I need to be passed in, actually. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Let's find out. I is less than X, question mark, zero, colon, um, R square bracket, I minus X. Bad. And I'm utterly incompetent this is going to work, so let's just try it once and see what we got here. So, That's I think we're going to need I. And, a, and I think we might need I also, yeah, but let's just try this back to I think I might have eaten one too many parentheses. No, I don't know what's happening anymore. Put the I up in here, just in case. Okay. So visual mode with a B, and we will do man, which, okay. I vec two works, okay. Let's test this. Still works, great, awesome. Uh, you know, we're, we are bringing about the apocalypse with this code, I mean. Yeah, you know, we are we are not doing the Lord's work tonight. It is past midnight. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, summoning Cthulhu code. All right, uh, I vec. Was that three? Do you remember if it was three? It was three. It was three. It was three. Okay. There, and then this part here will become man. I vec two, and this one is. Man, such a bad man. Back three. And there you go. Okay, so if this works, it does. We can delete the old iteration, and now it even fits on one line. I mean, it's kind of widescreen, but you know, I'll drink a monster to that. Man, such a horrible name, too. I love it. Um. We go one more level down, maybe. Repeating 
the NAMs twice. When you pass in uh, command line parameters, it's, it gets passed in as strings, strings, right? Yeah, you get a, you get an array of strings, right? Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, can we can we do it that way? But no, I don't think. Like a and arg count and char star star arg vector. Is that thing? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. You could like pass so in pass in the, the vector instead of passing it in instead of declaring it. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I think I think that'll explode our code because we would have to do like stories, you know, to Yeah. And then we're gonna have to start including things. Yeah. So no. Yeah. I mean I, I feel pretty good about this one. I think that if I applied at Google and wrote this, I think they would hire me. I think I think they would be scared not to. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I would just drink my Panda Express tea and... Uh, this is peak job scary. And just stare at them and be like, how could you not hire me with this beautiful masterpiece on the screen? So, all right. Uh, do you guys want to see another uh, dynamic programming? Uh, Implementation. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna preserve this one for antiquity uh, before I mutilate it further. Uh, public uh, DP fib. I'm just gonna call this DP uh, genius tier dot cc. There we go. Yes. We need it. I think I might need to comment this. Uh, uh, you can walk through the array moving forwards steps or three steps at a time. Uh, your score at the end is the sum of the values you step on. What is the maximum value you can achieve? Okay, that's the problem. Okay? And because I know I'm gonna forget that. <laughs> when I when I look at this in the future, I'm going to be like, what the... <laughs> I will not be able to explain this to my future students. So, uh, why is it NAN? What is what is even happening here? Uh, and I'll maybe make a note of that too. Uh, every day we move further from the light. How about that? Okay. Hey, uh, Voss, you got, you, got, you, got any more, you got any more ideas, Voss? Anything? Any more to, to like shrink, shrink it? it? Yeah. The, the only thing, thing I can think of is if there's a way we can uh, like combine the last two lines. Yeah. Or we have a turn. And I mean, we repeat. Like, no, we we should, should be able this, right? Right. right. So so we, we have, have that, that twice. twice. Yeah. What, what if we did, did another define? define? No, no, I mean, I mean we, we could do two more defines. I mean, what 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 matters oh. more to us? What what are we going to score on? Vertical lines or horizontal? I think at this point we're just having fun. I so, I think there is no criteria. I think we can do what we want. You make, you make another, another define. define. This, this time, time you take in one, one number and it calls NAN. Right. Because then, then it we pass in two or three. three. I need a name. You need to give me a name as beautiful as NAN is. Uh, Eric, Eric, what's, what's the, the rest name? name? The naked mole rat. Wormy. <laughs> How about we use an emoji for a rat? There we go. And then it'll just take in a number, right? And then this will write nan i comma vec. Comma, no, I've already used i. Damn it. Uh, x. There we go. I x like that. The preprocessor doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. It doesn't like it. Oh, but it's because the uh, IntelliSense is clang. I, I you bet it'll work. I bet this is actually going to work. G plus plus will work. Yes, G plus yes. plus. <laughs> G plus plus does not hate fun. Clang does get wrecked. Clang. All right. So here we go. Let's do this. Um, all right. So I, I think I can get rid of the parentheses now. So this is. Yeah, this is just gonna be, um, yeah, Keith. Let's do. Let's call it Keith. 
the Keith of two is, let's see if this actually still works. No, uh, uh, what, what happened here? What happened? I might need the parentheses. Uh, uh, wait, wait, what did I, what did I do? I have lost count. No. Um, oh. Close. That seems. Uh. It's going about, about the expansion of the background. background. Why? Uh. Oh, I forgot a parenthesis up here. Look at that. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, fair enough. All right. Yeah. Again. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. 90. All right, here we go. All right. So the Keith of two, and you know what I'm what I'm really looking forward for in the future is like somebody who like skipped the early part of this lecture to just be like, <laughs> like thinking that, that? that we're doing some sort of like deep mathematical analysis, you know what I mean? Like this is like some like abstract algebra set theory abstract combinatorics i don't even know the right terms but it's just emoji being used as a noun to find like that and of course it works there it is let's go keith okay let's go okay like we've gone to a point now where clang is mad at us so i'll, I'll drink my panda express to that Ah, oh, Hazelton picked it up. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> there you go. There, oh, there's like two of me now. Look at that. Okay, that was like two years ago during the pandemic. All right. Um, thank you, Hazelton, for finding that. I mean, this. I mean, I'm. I don't want to say that the code is perfect, but I, I think it's getting pretty close to perfect. Uh, we could. Do, do some, some work, work finds for, for two, two and three, three and just really throw some emojis in there. Mm. Like, like what, what you did for the, the Seaside 40 midterms this semester. But I don't, I don't know if that's... I, 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 don't, I don't think we need to like necessarily obfuscate the code. Like I don't, think, I don't right. think the point here is actually making something that's hard to read. We're actually just kind of stripping it down to its bare essence, right? So you've got... You've got your vector, which let's you know just maybe call that R. Nah, whatever. We we call the vector. Let's just whatever. It's fine. Okay. So we've got our vector of numbers, and we're saying starting at point two, going to the end one step at a time. Each element is going to be equal to the greater of either the the uh, the two back or the three back added to the current value. Right, that's actually that's actually the dynamic programming algorithm in a nutshell. Despite Clang uh, hating emojis as part of the identifier, which, to be fair, it, it is following the standard. You're not supposed to be able to do this, but G plus plus allows it. Right, I think I think that actually kind of that that actually kind of highlights the the DP algorithm, right? Like you're starting in a way. Right, this was a good thing. Yeah. You're welcome. Maybe I should make it like a negative two and a negative three, you know? Yeah. Right. Define, Define negative, negative two as, as two. two. Yeah. Well, because I mean, right now it's going backwards two, right? Right. But I think it might make more sense to people who are, who are joining our chat right now if, if it was like that. Like, grab the value from two back. And grab the value from three back. You know what I mean? You're saying just change it to plus x instead of minus x. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and, the, and then uh, this would have to be. Nah, you know I'm not touching it. <laughs> My brain can't handle it right now. I don't have enough horchata in me right now. So, Cornelia, you sure that's C? Yeah, dude. Panda Express doesn't have booze. I don't think. Here. No, I'm gonna dump this on my lap. It's tea, I promise you. It's the mango black tea. Uh, <laughs> use the pensive 
for size. Okay, sure. I think we're about. I think we're about done. All right, that's, uh, and now playing just hates us even more. But, but it still works. It still play. works. There we go. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna. Anyone else? Any other? Any other horrible suggestions? Or I'm gonna go to sleep. Did you guys learn something tonight about dynamic programming? Yeah, go to sleep, Bruce. There's, there's nothing of any merit here. <laughs> it manuals for real, for real. The first five minutes were valuable. Uh. Yeah. I the first, like, 20. first like twenty minutes were valuable. Yeah. yeah. Then uh then it became a code golf assignment somewhere. Your birthday yesterday, yeah. Congratulations, Ben Court. Happy happy twenty second birthday. All right, well with that, I'm gonna sign it off. You're gonna have a problem very similar to this on the final. But it, it won't look this stupid. stupid. It won't? Right? right? Or will it? it? Uh don't ask me questions right now, dude. I'm I'm not making great great decisions as as my code <laughs> Clear, clearly shows. I think this is a good idea. I came up with the blame for you. That, that is that is true. That is true. I I, I will happily share uh, some of the blame with you on this one. Like, this is at least probably at least sixty percent my fault. Okay, there you go. If you guys want to copy that, DP Genius tier is in fact now up in the public directory for your for your perusal, admiration, and respect. With that, I'm going to say good night, guys. Peace. Good night. Thank you, Kearney. No problem, man.